many of the solid blocks moved by ancient builders. From my perspective, it is almost impossible to take the 340-ton rock and move it without modern-day technology. It baffles my mind. I, I, I have no idea. It's crazy to think about. How did our ancestors move monoliths? Some over five times the size of levitated mass without the aid of high-powered machines. Researchers believe the ancients not only used power to move solid stone, but to cut it as well. And the evidence can be found on a remote cliff face buried in the Andes Mountains. Oyan Tambo, Peru. The walls of this ancient mountain stronghold tell the story of what some experts believe to have mm -hmm. been thousands of craftsmen That's shaping cute. and oh. cutting solid stone with a precision that today could only be matched with high-powered machine tools. I'm sure this is your favorite show, like mine. <laughs> we find huge cube-like sections of stone and a site which is very hard oh, have been removed cute. from the mountain with such accuracy that we can't find a scratch in the surface. The corners also are not sharp, they're perfectly rounded, and no one can explain how this could have been achieved. The ability to fit perfectly fitting stones of several tons in weight together, so that a single human hair can't fit in between them, is not a question of sweat or man hours. It's a question of technology. It's really done to perfection. And not just perfection with small blocks of stone, but with blocks of stone weighing many, many tons. I believe that Oyante Tongo is evidence of really advanced human civilization on Earth that was also worldwide and had power tools. The only thing that we have left over is the original stone that all these ancient structures were built in. Everything else that was built on top of it that had to do potentially with electrical components, that has disappeared because only stone withstands the test of time. Is it possible that the most dominant civilizations of antiquity were able to achieve such status because of energy-driven technologies. And if so, what was the source of that power? Perhaps clues may be found among ancient Mesopotamian artifacts. The National Museum of Iraq. In 1938, the museum director discovers terracotta pots and copper cylinders in the archives that may have been used as galvanic cells. The nearly 2,000 year old devices called Baghdad batteries are believed to predate the invention of the cell battery by more than 1,000 years. Archaeologists speculate they may have been used to electroplate gold onto silver for decorative jewelry. The Baghdad battery that we've currently found in Iraq, about a dozen of them, it can generate around four volts. Now, a current modern-day flashlight could be run by a 9-volt battery. So if we think of a Baghdad battery around this size generating 4 volts, what if we increase the size to around 6 feet? That might generate 20, 30, 50 volts and have the sufficient power to actually utilize energy in a way that we do today. Mainstream scientists agree that the Baghdad battery is evidence ancient man had the means to create power and the understanding of how to apply it. But is there proof of even more complex devices that may have run on electricity? <laughs> 370 miles south of the Giza Plateau stands the Hathor Temple. Approximately 4,000 years old, the halls of this monument are lined with curious images. But one relief depicts what many ancient astronaut theorists believe to be proof that the ancients used power. They call it the Dendera Bulb. Here is a replica of the bulb that's shown in the Dendera reliefs in Egypt. 
What's interesting about this bulb is the fact that on the wall relief, we see the bulb is actually plugged into what appears to be a power source. Did our ancestors have an understanding of how to generate power thousands of years before modern man? Or is it possible that they received the knowledge from some otherworldly source, as some ancient astronaut theorists contend? Electricity is one of those things that ancient cultures seem to be harnessing in ways that we still can't wrap our brain around. So it's very possible that when we look at things like electricity, where would they get this information? We have all sorts of stories, mythologies, and legends that could be interpreted as gods who in reality were misinterpreted extraterrestrials gifting man with technology in the form of power. For example, when God said, let there be light in the Old Testament, or when Prometheus gave fire to man, the burning bush and the eternal flame at the temple of Apollo, all of that conceivably could have been technology. The question is not if they use power. The question is where did they get the knowledge with which they created the power? Is there really evidence among the ruins of ancient civilizations that man had access to sophisticated technologies that ran on power? If so, where are the mysterious power plants that generated the energy? Perhaps they're still here, hiding in plain sight. Only T-Mobile has America's best unlimited 4G LTE family plan. That's right, the best in the game. Two lines of unlimited 4G LTE data for 100 bucks a month. But for a plan this big, you'll want a killer phone. Get the LG G4 for zero down. Add lines for only 40 bucks a pop. So give your carrier the boot. Get the LG G4 and full speed 4G LTE data that really is unlimited. Switch to the shot at you. Mommy. Crispy M&M's are back. What are you doing? You said to tell our fans Crispy M&M's are back. Not those fans. Did you mean this fan? No. Oh, what about that one? Hi. There's a fan in the break room. Oh, is so good. Back? They're back. Imagine you didn't have a car payment this summer. Would you take a vacation or go on a shopping spree? Well, at the Kia Summer's On Us sales event, we'll make your first three monthly payments. Plus, give you 0% APR for up to 66 months on the Sporty Optima and High Tech Forte. So you can have your best summer ever. Your first three monthly payments on us. Plus, 0% APR for up to 66 months. Hurry in today to your Kia Retailer for the Summer's On Us sales event. I'm Sharon the Subway Guy, and this is my story. Young guy eats junk food and gains a lot of weight. Guy changes life by eating at Subway every day, walks a lot, and loses over 200 pounds. Guy now has even more reason to make smarter choices. Ready to write your story? Well, here we are. The one night vacation. It's a thing of beauty that only parents can truly appreciate. All it takes is one night away from the kids to get out there and mix it up like you used to. So you're going to check out restaurants, bars, and even a show. Because you've saved up to 60% on your hotel with hot wire. Or you could just... Well... You know. There's me charge. <laughs> Where are you guys from? Lewis and Clark. Brian, do you think it was Power Group that helped us trek through nearly 8,000 miles of uncharted wilderness? No. Take this. It has protein you'll need for your journey. D3 from Oscar Mayer. It's 13 grams of protein from the original source. If you've been injured in a car accident, don't wait. Call 8. The experienced attorney that Serena and Mark has the answers and support you need. They are ready to help 24-7. Don't wait. Call 8. And me? Ah, yes! Can't stop it. Oh, your mom liked my post. You're friends with my mother? Yeah. Mother of some? Oh, we we all use it differently. So why should we get it all the same way? Call Time Warner Cable to get the internet speed you need. Or I guess text each other. Whether it's 3 megs or 300 megs. Yeah. For the right price. It's From $14.99 everyday low price. To 300 meg ultra faster. We have you covered. Even with Wi-Fi at home and on the go. Plans start at $14.99 per month. Call 1-855-1TWC to switch today. Time Warner Cable. Enjoy better. At Salino Environs, we have handled thousands of head-on 
T-bone and rear end car accident cases. And we have won millions in settlements for our clients. Use our experience to help you get the best result possible. Don't wait. Call eight. I'm looking forward to see this show. It says driving. Monday. Texas Rising. Continues Monday at 9. One of the great mysteries of the Pyramid of Giza is how ancient people were able to light the interior chambers while they were being built. At first, it was thought that torches were used, but the ceilings inside the pyramid show no traces of soot. One time, I was actually inside no, the king's chamber when the lights went out and I tried to use my lighter, but it didn't work. There wasn't even enough oxygen to feed the flame. So how was it done? Some have proposed that light was directed from outside with a series of copper mirrors. But people have actually tried to recreate this, oh, and after yeah. passing through only a few well, corners, the I'm sunlight fades away I'm to nothing. To so the only remaining solution is that it was that. illuminated with an artificial yeah, light source, possibly a type of light bulb. But what's really they amazing is where the power to light the bulb like might have come from. Nice. The Giza Necropolis, Egypt, 1993. <laughs> nice. A team of engineers uses a remotely operated you play. camera you play. in an attempt to discover the true function of what is believed to be an air shaft, leading from the supposed Queen's Chamber of the Great Pyramid. First discovered in 1872, Archaeologists long considered these narrow tunnels to be ventilation ducts. This robot traveled up this small shaft, which was too small for a human or any type of device to go through. And all of a sudden it finds a closed door hinged by two little metal clamps. According to mainstream archaeologists, the door and metal handles were intentionally built as a symbolic passageway that the queen would travel through to the afterlife. Onyx, you must love this show, right? Isn't it? But sure some researchers have questioned why nice this passageway would have been designed with a deliberate blockage. And, uh, and why, on a plateau filled with monumental pyramids believed hey, to serve as nice. royal tombs, is the Great Pyramid the only one with such a door? Egyptologists are very much fond of saying that pyramids are tombs and that they have been robbed at some point in the past. Right. But the fact is that we have Don't found in the 20th century a number of pyramids whose central king's chamber, so to speak, is intact. And when they opened the sarcophagus, they found that sarcophagus to be empty as well. If the Great Pyramid was not a tomb, what may have been its true purpose. In May 2011, another team of researchers set out to further explore the blocked air shaft in the Queen's Chamber. This time, the crew used a robot equipped with a micro snake camera to slip through a hole and reveal what was beyond the door. When they actually penetrated this small door, they found a hidden room within the pyramid. What they found was copper fittings, or the metal fittings. Another feature of the back of these metal fittings was that on one side, the loop looked like it was corroded. The camera also looked down and scanned the floor. And what we saw was red markings. And my interpretation of those were, they were electrical symbols. But why were they there? Could these artifacts be actual evidence that electricity once coursed through the structure? And if so, could the Great Pyramid of Giza have been built to serve as not a royal tomb, but a power plant, as some researchers contend? If we dismiss the tomb theory and we look at the pyramid itself, we see something that modern engineers can really tune into and understand. 
What we have is a very, very precise building that has the precision of a fraction of an inch. It's something that is very noteworthy and not indicative of a simple agrarian culture. So what we have is something that is almost like a machine.